Welcome back to Ghostman and Rivera's Horror Show Podcast. I'm Mike Ghostman Pickle. And I'm James Rivera. So this week, Mike and I had the opportunity to go to an advanced screening of Suspiria. Tread lightly, James. And while we can't say much, we're legally bound not to say much about it. We can say this. It's great. It's a really high quality, really intense, and Dakota Johnson is amazing. Yeah, that's one thing I can say about it. Dakota Johnson's performance was the performance of her, her career. The third Annabelle film. Boo! Yeah. <laughs> no one gives a shit. So Creepshow is coming back as an anthology TV series for Shutter streaming services. Yes. KNB FX is doing the makeup. And they are phenomenal. It's awesome. I love Greg Nicotero, and it's it's awesome that he finally gets to work on something good again. <laughs> like he did with like he did with Walking Dead. No, so you watch we'll anything see. interesting this week, Michael? I went to the Downtown Independent and saw a screening of Song of Solomon, a very gory exploitation film, and it's from the American Guinea Pig series. The main thing that was kind of distracting was Jessica Cameron. Mm-hmm. Uh, she was she was probably the best actor in the film, yeah. but her performance of a possessed girl was too much. I'm a possessed girl. <sighs> you don't have to talk like that. <laughs> you know what I mean? Have you ever seen Eyes Without a Face? Oh, that's a French film, isn't it? Yeah. That's a French horror film from 1960. I just rewatched it. They actually show in detail the the operation process of removing someone's face, and they do it really slowly and methodically where they put the forceps in, they draw the lines, and you see them cutting along and cutting the skin off the face. They grab the forceps and slowly pull the face off way ahead of its time and a, a pretty disturbing. Was it better than John Woo's face-off surgery? Oh, man, that's a ridiculous (laughs) comparison. (laughs) Yeah, this film is always mentioned with body horror. Oh, yeah. It's it's an early example of it, one of the best, um, really a a classic of its genre. Where did you watch it? I own this on Blu-ray. I have it on Criterion. Uh, The Fourth Kind. Which is a polarizing horror film, which which we're going to discuss Is it really next. polarizing? Because I haven't seen it because I have heard zero, virtually nothing positive about, about it except yeah. from you. Yeah. And no. I watched it again and I tried to pinpoint why do I like this damn film so much when nobody does. And I want to know too. I, I got to watch it, this. Dude. I almost watched this this week because because of you because really? I know you're the only person I know that actually likes it. I fucking loved it. And I mean, <laughs> I even documented the times it gave me chills. It gave me really? chills. It gave me chills 6 times. 6 times. Like legit goosebumps rising up on my arms. Does that say have I been abducted then and I'm suppressing it? Is that why I'm scared shitless by this damn movie and nobody else is? <laughs> Maybe. I thought it was because I was fooled the first time I watched it. Just just so our viewers know, we have people in our studio who are making faces at the thought of this <laughs> movie, at the mention of this movie right now. They're they're shaking their heads. Whack. Whack. Yes, yeah, see, they're they're shaking their heads in yeah, it's, in disbelief. <laughs> it's it's a really unconventional way to approach filmmaking to say the least. And I think Eli Roth I can't. I don't know the exact quote. Just paraphrasing, but Eli Roth had said something about how a lot of horror fans they're always asking for something new, something original, something different. And every time you actually give them what they want, they end up shitting on it and pissing yeah. all over it. It it seems that in spite of all that, the horror genre continues its renaissance with really high quality, well made films. The past five or six years, we keep saying it over and over has seen the quality in horror films rise quite a and bit. Because th- it was in a slump in the early 2000s. I think that's what, that's what a lot of horror fans don't like. Is the renaissance there's period? More, there's more horror fans right now. So more casual movie fans yeah. are turning into horror fans. So it's not 
theirs anymore. It's not their little yeah. private thing that they sit in a Hipsters. dark room and watch anymore. Hipsters. You know? well, <laughs> there's no way to please them except to replicate. Just make them watch the old films they grew up with. That's the only way to please certain horror fans. Yeah. There was also part of the backlash was because it was it wasn't in English. People thought it was in English. That's stupid. If your if your complaints about a movie are that it's subtitles and it's in different language, fuck you. <laughs> I heard a lot of complaints like no. that. Well, that's about all we have time yeah. for this week, kids. So we'll see you coming next week. Uh, check out for any updates on our horror show page at pickle at pickles horror show. Anything you'd like to say before we leave, James? Also check out our Facebook page. It's just under Horror Show. Help us get to get more likes. Stay tuned. Until next time. Happy horror. Happy horror.